Hello, 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 hello. What are these? These are my bangs. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dana and I am so excited to be filming this today because I've got a brand new sunscreen in. It was just launched, I think like a week ago, if not maybe less than that. It is the Alpha H Total Eclipse Broad Spectrum SPF 40 Priming Mineral Sunscreen. Ooh, mouthful. But anyway, just call it the Total Eclipse Sunscreen. So Alpha H is a brand from Australia and this one is sold in America, so it's not necessarily using all of the kind of newer filters. It's actually supposed to be just a mineral sunscreen. So, but we'll get into that in a second. I did want to just sit down and film it because it's a little, I don't know. I don't think, well, I haven't heard anyone talking about it yet. That's not to say that they haven't, but there's some small little picky issues that I have about it. So I'm going to get into that and we're going to get going. But if you are not already subscribed, do so below. If you like this video, just please give it a big old like because it really does help my channel and we'll get into it. Um, yeah, I mentioned this in the other video. Yeah, I've got a rash. We're gonna take care of it. I'm gonna go to the dermatologist next week. I think it's just dermatitis, not a big deal. And I can get some medicine and will go away. But I'm going to apply this just to my face. I mentioned that in the other video because I don't wanna irritate it more and I've got an ointment on. So I'm gonna apply a little bit less than typical, but this is my quarter of a teaspoon. I think that's a little bit less. And we'll get into it. So this is the Alpha H Total Eclipse Priming Mineral SPF 40. It retails for $45 and it comes in a little bit less than your typical package. It comes in 1.35 fluid ounces or 40 milliliters. So it's pricey. We're getting, you know, like $10 plus per 10 milliliters. So that is $33 and change per, per ounce. So not cheap. <laughs> Let's see, what does it say about this? It says, this lightweight, non-greasy mineral formula provides protection against UVA and UVB rays and blue light while moisturizing and priming skin for the day ahead. So it's got non-nano mineral physical, like mineral slash physical formulation, super powered antioxidant complex, and like I said, SPF 40. So this is suitable for most skin types, which is nice that they do say that because I don't know if it's suitable for all skin types, which I'll talk about in a second, but it has a subtle tint to help minimize the white cast caused by the UV filters. And as far as your ingredients, we have titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. It doesn't say the percentage of those on the website, but on the back of my bottle, it does say that you have 2% titanium dioxide and 1% zinc oxide which I'm going to talk about in a second. You also have squalane, hydrolyzed sodium hyaluronite, which is like hyaluronic acid. It helps bind water to your face and skin and then vitamin E as well. Okay, so those are the specs about specs of it. Um, I just wanted to kind of give you like a little bit of a zoomed out look. I mean, the camera's not zoomed out. I'm just sitting back. My neck, which is the part of my body that just doesn't change color ever, which maybe that's a good thing. You can see the lightness of it. And then you can see the color of the Alpha H. So I really like this sunscreen, but I feel like as I sit, like I put it on and I'm like, oh, this looks so great but like within maybe five minutes, it has oxidized. And I don't know if that's necessarily like what it's supposed to do, but I've never really experienced that with the sunscreen. It definitely has a subtle tint. I'll show you a swatch of it. So this is the tint. You can see it's not much, like it's not super dark in the coloring, but if I sit here and rub it in, I feel like it does just oxidize on the skin which I'm not gonna hold my hand here for five minutes, but it's just kind of one of those things where like it goes on this color, which seems like it blends into my skin, but then somehow I end up with my face looking like this. It's a lot. Like I look at myself in the mirror and I wore it yesterday to a family get together. And I was like, this looks so good while I'm sitting here. And then I went to the bathroom and I came back and I was like, oh my God, like this is not, this is not good. Like you can see a line of demarcation because I'm not putting it on my neck, but a little got down there. And it's just like, 
pulling very, very orange. So for me, I don't know if I can wear this. Like, I mean, I guess I can in the summer. Like my skin does, well, you can't see it here, but it does get darker in the summer and I don't mind um, kind of matching my face to my body. But this just feels like a color that I can't really get down with. So, but let's talk about kind of the rest of the parts of the sunscreen. I think that they did a good job in kind of nailing what it is. It's a moisturizing sunscreen. It really acts as like a moisturizing primer if you're gonna wear makeup. I've not had any pilling. It doesn't have any scent. It doesn't sting my eyes. Um, it does have butyloctyl salicylate. So if you're looking for a purely mineral sunscreen with no chemical filters, this is not it. Butyloctyl salicylate is a SPF booster, but it's also basically like a non-regulated active ingredient. So. This would make it a hybrid sunscreen, and that's also why they can get away with putting 2% titanium dioxide and 1% zinc dioxide in it. This, um, they've done that in many sunscreens, but usually they actually have the active ingredients much higher. This is pretty low. Um, it reminds me of the Wander Beauty one. They had very low percentages also, and claimed that it was a mineral sunscreen, which it wasn't, it's a hybrid. So I'm not saying that you don't get the SPF 40. I think you really do, because there are plenty of SPF boosters in it but it's just not necessarily 100% mineral or physical like they're claiming. So I do wanna mention, I reviewed the Then I Met You earlier today, which you'll see before this one, but if you're looking for kind of a moisturizing one, I think that the Then I Met You one is going to give you longer lasting moisture throughout the day. This one feels moisturizing and it looks nice and glowy right now, but it does set down and you're not going to have that long lasting hydration throughout the day. Like, especially under makeup, I wore it the other day. I felt like around my eyes where I get a little bit drier, it did feel a little bit tighter, a little bit drier. So I wouldn't reach for this alone if you have dry skin. I would layer it over a moisturizer and kind of do your normal skincare. But, you know, for somebody who has more normal skin, it could be a really good option. I always forget to mention, I'm trying to do a better job, but my skin is more normal combo, especially in the summer, it gets more oily. So for me, this is a good option. As long as it sets down and I give it some time or I put a little bit of powder on it, it's fine. It's not overly moisturizing. Um, it doesn't feel super greasy. I mean, there's a tack to it. Like it's not set down. Like it still comes off of my fingers, but it's not something that I can't deal with. It's not quite like some of the others, like the Eucerin one where it was just like, whoosh, I had moisture on my face for years. I felt like this is not kind of that one. So I think it actually could work for pretty much all of the skin types, as opposed to maybe the Then I Met You, which I don't recommend for more oily skin. This one, I think if you're oily skin, you just need to powder a little bit more. If you're normal, wear it alone. And if you're drier, put it on underneath your moisturizer or over top your moisturizer. Okay, so do I recommend you run out and get this? No. I don't and I am really excited every time I put it on but then this oxidation happens and I feel like I look an unnatural color like I can tan like that's not an issue for me so me having like a darker skin tone on my face not really a big deal but it doesn't feel like it looks natural on my skin like it feels very orange and what you're seeing on the camera right now is pretty much what I'm seeing like it's a pretty true color balance right now so it does look quite orange and I just don't love that tone. But if your skin does pull more warm, this could work for you. I just don't think it's remarkable. <laughs> I think that's the theme of today as I batch film, um, the Then I Met You and then this one. They're pricey. This is 36, this is 45. And I think you can find equivalents for much, much less and they're gonna do the same job. So if you're really, really into this one, it might be a good option, but it's just not something that I'm gonna be recommending to everybody, especially because I don't know how this tone is gonna to pull on most people. But with that said, I think that's it. I am going to take this off my face because I don't wanna look like a pumpkin, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.